Hello and welcome to the Wild Pro Tier. My name is Clinton John. Thanks once again for joining me, guys. Um, like I said last week, uh, trying to bring you guys uh, content. Um, isn't easy during lockdown, but uh, I've been sort of scrolling through uh, Twitter, Facebook, and you know all sorts of social media, um, trying to give you guys uh, my thoughts on on the current situation and what's going on um, in South African sports. So. Um, yeah, so before I get into things, just don't forget to like this video, don't forget to subscribe, um, also hit that notification button so you can get all the latest from the Wild Pro Tier. Um, and just also before I get into things, uh, this, what I'm trying to do here guys, I'm trying to create a fan channel for South African sport, I'm trying to create um, sort of friction causes fire type of vibes here, so like I'm trying to get everyone from Twitter and Facebook and wherever you complain or, or talk about South African sport, I'm trying to get it all into one sphere. Um, so yeah, spread the, spread the word guys, thanks. Um, so a recent uh, debate is around, the, um, in, in the Proteus setup is around the captaincy. Now, um, there has been a lot of, a lot of mention of different names that have, have come up. Uh, so I'll just run through the names and then give you my view on those players and who I think should be captain. Um, Dean Algo has been mentioned, Aidan Markram, Timber Vavuma, uh, Quinton de Kock obviously now um, being one day and T20 captain. Uh, they've decided that the workload would be too much for him to be um, test captain as well. Um, so that's that's that apparently um and then in my opinion one name that i've thrown in is uh kg kahisa rabada now if you just run through those names quickly dean algo um you know dean how many how many years does he really have left in the tank um and is that a good way to to maybe um have a guy that everyone knows uh, you know consistent performer um as as captain, you know, lead from the front, open the batting, sort of a Graham Smith in the Graham Smith type mold, also left-handed, also a very uneasy on the eye at times, uh, Dean. Um, but I just don't think that that's a viable plan for the future because you know how many how many years is he going to have left in the tank? Is it sort of um, four or five? Then maybe then I could say yeah maybe. Um, but then you you might be stifling someone else's captaincy career by doing that. So. Um, it's a difficult one there with Dean. I, I don't think he would be the ideal choice for me um, just because you just don't know how many years he's got left in the tank. Um, and also because, you know, recent performances haven't been that great. So he's, if he doesn't perform, he's, his head might be on the chopping block as a captain. So that's a, that's a tough one for me. Um, and then Aiden Markram, well, Aiden's not even in the team at the moment. So I, I don't see how you could potentially make him uh, captain. There is rumours that he might that he was supposed to come in for the West Indies series um, and, and maybe captain the side as well. He did captain the under-19s to a World Cup. Uh, he did do that. So, you know, the, the, he's got sort of credibility. Let me put this pin down before I distract myself. Um, yeah, so he has got a bit of credibility there. But I just don't think... I think Aiden needs to establish himself in the team first and foremost um with a run of good form uh, i think that's more important for him and now in his career to establish himself in the team and then look at captaincy um timber Bavuma has been spoken about uh he was the, of course the vice captain to faf um at a, uh, for a time um you know but timba has um fallen on, on on some bad form although he did um score some runs domestically um he is still around the setup you know Timber's not a bad option um, at all, and um, but I just don't think he also needs to re-establish himself in the team, and I just don't think it's the right time in his career for that right now. Um, and then, sorry, also one name I must mention is Keshef Maharaj. Now, um, if you guys have followed me at all, you'll know that I've been probably one of his biggest critics, but... You know, during the lockdown, I've had some time to sit down and, 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 and really alert, sorry, analyze um, the career of Keshev Maharaj. And, you know, the simple fact that he came into the team when uh, sort of we've struggled for, for uh, you know, uh, some, some batting. 
uh, for a long, long while now. And I think that that has affected him as well. Even though he's taken over 100 wickets, uh, still is, is a testament to just how good a bowler he is. With us constantly not getting 400, uh, 400 plus runs, um, you know, when a spinner doesn't really have runs to play with, he's not as effective because you can effectively hit him out the tack because um, it's 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 once it's uh, gets down to crunch time, you're gonna you're gonna go with uh, you know the faster bowlers and stuff like that, especially here in South African wickets. Um, I think Kesh has been done, done a disservice by his batsmen, not getting enough runs. And I think once they get enough runs, I think you'll see him come into his own light. Uh, and as far as captaincy goes, I must admit, I've only seen him captain one game. And apparently he has captained um, various age group levels and a first class level before. Uh, I did see him captain one game. That was a Momentum One Day Cup game uh, against the Cobras. And he did exceptionally well in that game. The changes he made at the right time... Um, but it's only one game. Um, but you know, a spinner often um, often sees the game from a different point of view, uh, and, and can often see the game a bit further ahead um, than maybe other guys. Because as a spinner, you have to kind of think that way because you never know when you're going to come into the um, into the bowling attack. So, in a way, uh, you have to sort of see what's going to happen. Like, okay. KG's going well right now. He's taken a couple wickets, but he's getting tired. Should I bring myself on? Should I bring another Seema on? Um, see how the batting is going. And, and, and sort of, you've got to analyze on the fly as a spinner. So I think maybe having a spinner as captain might be a good idea. Um, I would be inclined to have Kesh as well. But uh, my choice would be uh, KG Rabada. Now, for me, this is obviously, for most of you, it'll be a bit of a left field choice. I mean, the guy just got suspended for, um, you know, his celebration and, and, that, and that sort of thing. And I just think that maybe having KG as captain we might just settle him down in that regard. Um, I think it'll make him focus more on, on performing um, um, up front for the team instead of, uh, going out there and trying to take wickets, which I think is what he's been doing lately. And that's why he's, um, well, so-called, he's been struggling. I, I don't see he's been struggling. He's got, uh, during this, this last sort of year and a half, two years, or, or where, however long he's been struggling, um, he's, got the, he's got Jimmy Anderson's career average. So that's not too bad, if you ask me. Um, but yeah, I just think KG would be a great choice. A uh, spearhead leading... Um, leading the country, and I just think you know, I think it might just settle him down. Obviously, he's got a lot of experience around him. He's played with, um, he's played with Graham Smith. He's played with, I think he's played with Graham Smith. I'm not sure. Uh, I'll have to look that up. <laughs> but he's played with Faf. Um, he's played with um, obviously uh, all the guys, um, Abel de Villiers, and all the, the the senior players. He's played with Hashim Amlers of the world, and and so on and so forth. He's learned from the likes of Dale Stane. He's learned. You know, um, from the likes of, of Vernon Philander, I think that KG could is is a is a an appointment where he could grow into the captaincy. Um, obviously, he's now what 23, 24 years old, so he'd still have a, he'd have a long career ahead of him. Uh, generally, a fast bowler uh, without injuries. You know, the, you know Jimmy Anderson's still going at 36, 37. So D Dale Stane's also still going, although not in the Test arena. Uh, so I think he could have a, a long and, and fruitful career as a captain, I really do. Um, and I think it might just settle him down as a player as well. Um, not that his, his spot is in question, but settle him down in terms of now he will have a, a, a direction. You know, I think it'll give him purpose, it'll give him, um, it'll give him something else to think about as well, which you don't always want as a bowler, but I think he can handle it. Uh, um, I really do. Uh, so that would be my choice, either KG or uh, Keshef Maharaj. Um, so just moving on to some rugby now, some super rugby. So New Zealand, if you haven't heard, have decided to have their own sort of super rugby competition. That they called it uh, Super Rugby Aotearoa. Ayo Ayo I completely butchered that. I know that. I apologize for that. But yeah. So that competition will begin on uh, the 13th of June. The government in New Zealand have given them the okay. Um, so 
it's basically the Blues, the Chiefs, the Crusaders and the Hurricanes and they will play home and away over 10 weeks and then I guess they'll have some sort of winner there. I'm not sure how they can call it the Super Rugby competition, but it, yeah, anyway, that's just what they've done. And then as far as South African rugby is concerned, Mark Alexander, uh, SA Rugby president, has come out and said that they are hoping for an August-September restart of um, domestic rugby. And then um, they're looking at a six-team franchise tournament, uh, which will be followed by the Curry Cup thereafter. Um, yeah, and that's what we're looking at at the moment. Obviously, um, rugby and contact sports only are set to start after level one lockdown has been completed. So we don't know when that's going to be, but they're hoping uh, August, September. And then the, the Springboks mid-year um, mid test matches have been against, I think it was, I know one of them was Georgia. I think it was maybe Georgia and Scotland. I can't remember. Anyway, the, the, the test matches have been pushed back uh, to sort of hopefully October time. Um, they're still undecided, you know, about the rugby championship. That was due to be played in, I think, August and September as well. So, uh, not quite sure what's going to happen with the rugby championship, but I'm sure in the weeks to come, I'll have more news for you guys. And then last, we're going to end off with um, the cricket and the postponements. So the SAA side and the Proteus women's side tour to West Indies has been postponed for now. Um, and the Proteus uh, were due to tour there as well. That has, hasn't been postponed yet, but it's likely that it will be. Um, sad news, obviously, for, for, for us. Um, obviously, with the restrictions on international travel at the moment, it's very difficult um, to have any kind of sport, especially when you've got to travel. Um, I know you see like uh, soccer starting to start up again, Bundesliga, English Premiership, uh, that's all going to get going again. Um, but yeah, you know, in terms of the, the touring and, and, and that, um, I think that's probably not going to happen until possibly the end of the year. Um, you know, hopefully we can um, get some news on when the T20 World Cup is going to be, when... Um, we will be able to travel internationally for tours and such, but for now, um, obviously the the paramount thing is 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 safety and that uh, the players are safe and the fans are safe. So uh, you know we've been in the lockdown long enough now to understand that this is what we expect, and hopefully we can come through it and 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 be better for it. Uh, that is all I have for the Wild Pro Tier today, guys. Don't forget to like this. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to hit the um, subscribe button as well. Also the notification button uh, so you can get all the latest from the Wild Pro Tier. Um, get commenting below as well, guys. I'd like to hear from you guys. What would you like me to talk about on the Wild Pro Tier um, in future, next week, whenever? So get commenting and uh, I'll reply to your comments and, and we can take it from there. Um, yeah, so that's all I have. Have a fantastic weekend, guys. I will see you again next week. Um, for the wild protea. Cheers, have an awesome weekend.